Oh my god. Oh my god. No explosions! No immediate explosions. That little clip just there basically sums up uh, how the entire prototyping stage went of my custom wooden PC case. Um, this is the component layout for the prototype. This uh, rather anonymous black box down here is the power supply, sitting below the motherboard and its CPU cooler, with a back fan, a front fan, a big GPU up right on top, and uh, an SSD tray just down here. I put some thought into this, and it was kind of designed to try and get good airflow, but be as compact as possible. But really, I didn't do an awful lot of planning. In fact, this 3D model was actually made after I'd already made the prototype in its entirety. And as a result, the prototype turned out... pretty gnarly. Um, but, I learned from my mistakes, and so when time came to... Uh, this... this one. When time came to embark on the full build, I had a much more detailed plan. I'd 3D modelled all the panels of plywood and all the doweling and where it was going to go. Um, it was all designed so that components could be viewed through this window here and be entirely uncluttered by cables, which could be on the other side compartmentalised over here, hidden away with the power supply and the SSD and all sorts of other stuff really went into this design to make it accessible and easy to construct and easy to build. It's worth mentioning, by the way, that um, all of this uh, was a gift, or is a gift, for one very special person. You know who you are. So, without further ado, the first thing after completing the modelling stage was to go shopping. Home base. Home base. <laughs> These ones. Next up is some doweling, and I need like three and a half meters of the stuff. That's all the way back there. All right. Hmm. I found some very nice wood here, but sadly it's a little bit too thick. Why is there so much cotton everywhere? Look, look at all this cotton! Where on earth is it coming from? Theoretically, I could just about get all the panels from this. Here we are, in the basement of Doom. I got all my wood. Got the old. PC case, which may be useful for some measurements. Crappy old graphics card, crappy old motherboard, crappy old CPU, crappy old... Mm, well, crappy old hard disk drive, I'm not going to use that. And, uh, crappy old power supply. So, looking like a pretty quality build so far. So this is pretty much how it ends up. Got all the uh, motherboard and the back fan and the GPU and everything in this kind of area, neatly separated off from the power supply and what was going to be the um, uh, SSD tray somewhere here on the wall. But I was never really happy with that because there just wasn't an easy mounting point. So instead, I realised it can fit on the front, which I quite like because, you know, you have the front panel on, but you can just take off the front panel, and boom, you've got access to the SSD. Before I even thought about doing this, I hadn't even considered the possibility, or hadn't even realised, that there was no way I was going to be able to get power to this front fan. Because it's mounted here, and all the power is over here, 
So, where is this cable gonna go? But luckily now it's super convenient because there has to be a hole for the, um, you know, the power and the data cable for the SSD to get through. Which, by the way, I probably will have to use a, uh, a right angle data cable, right angle SATA, to get through, unless I make this hole super large, super tall. But yeah, I'll be able to just thread this through where it needs to be. A lovely hole cuts just there. Fantastic. But yeah, and there, so it all goes through the uh, header, USB cables and whatnot can go over to where they need to be on the motherboard, which is just about here. And the SATA cable will be just around here. This is where the SATA port will be on the motherboard, mounted on these uh, pillars, obviously. And you've got the, the power supply wedged nicely in that corner there. Uh, Extracting a little bit of voltage to spin the fan. I want to unsolder the USB 3, this one, from the uh, header board. I've already tried it once, but they seem a bit difficult to melt these solder joints here. So I might call in some fatherly help for that. Magic. This is a, uh, a circular saw on the end of a hand drill, for some reason. What was the reason? Oh yes, this. The graphics card has uh, teeth at the end of it, kind of. These, these teeth here. And they're a bit longer than I thought they were going to be, so I had to cut out a nice little neat portion just to make sure they actually fit inside the case. But, in doing so, I kind of realised that I had another problem. The, um, the fan on top of the uh, motherboard was a bit too near the edge of the case. So I had to create this ugly little mess, which I actually didn't do with the circular saw in the end, but I tried to do with the circular saw. I did with a Stanley knife, ripped it out, so that the uh, case, the, the cover, wouldn't be pushed out by this annoying fan and its annoying measurements. And again, in the same kind of style, which I really grew fond of, despite its ugly nature on the inside, I managed to inlay the plastic. It's starting to look like a computer case. Hot glue good in. I can't even speak English anymore. <laughs> Hot glue gunned in window. Uh, that lovely reflection. Hello, me. Mm -hmm. Veneer to make it look not like crappy plywood. <laughs> uh, obviously, the covers... Lol. So I have screwed the top panel onto the, uh, the power supply to side panel for the cover. All that remains is to accurately screw this edge along to the window. Uh... <laughs> Now we have feet, as you can see, and I've also got some uh, finger guards for the front and back fan. I actually have several more finger guards, but they're uh, not going to be used because I was going to put a front GPU vent in for whichever GPU ends up in there, um, but in the end I decided that I didn't want to ruin this nice kind of wooden surface. Um, I don't think I could make it look good, especially not with just, you know, grills. So, I'm going to leave it nice and flat, and it's going to look lovely when the veneer goes over it. Um, and yeah, this entire thing, all in one piece. Stickers thought. So yeah, lovely jubbly. Next job is the front cover. 
The next job was not the front cover, it was these blue LEDs, because you know when you're building a case, you have to spice things up a little bit. I also bought this motor, which was going to drive some gears. It was going to be an awesome steampunk clockwork display on the side of the case, and the motor was just too loud. And it was all too complicated and would produce too much noise, so in the end I just didn't. But the LEDs at least did look pretty badass. This port powers um, the, the lights. Amazing focusing work there by the camera. Uh, this one is a standard kind of um, Molex to fan uh, adapter. So I'm planning just uh, tap into the power. Just gonna solder them on there. Hey. Oh, yeah. It's really always be reactive focus engine. <laughs> Can you tell? I'm not very experienced at this. <laughs> Alright, that's going to get capped on tape around it, and I'll do the other one as well. Scissors! What incredible bit of engineering, eh? Look at that. Give me my masters in electronics right now. No one else has ever soldered this well before. Clearly, because um, it worked, and no one else has ever been able to make things work. The next thing in store was to actually position the LEDs somewhere where they wouldn't blind you if you happened to glance into the case. So, with the use of this hot glue gun and some leftover plywood, uh, literally out of the bin, I uh, just put them on a bit of an angle. It works! It works! Okay, so here we have a fan running at 12 volts. That's making this kind of noise. No, I'm talking to my camera. Do you know what I should do? I'll tell you what I'll do. Hang on. Five volts. I don't know if these fans are rated to go this low, but five volts. Listen to that. It's silent. If I did go down to five volts, it would be so silent. And it would probably have enough airflow. Hmm. So inside the case, I have this whole kind of compartmentalized section, uh, which has all the messy cables, so that you can have this lovely, clean, solely component kind of bit over here. Whoops! All these messy cables um, are divided into different colors. The black is low and the red and yellow are high, the red is 12 volts high, and the yellow is 5 volts. So if we look back to, no, nope, that was way previous work, which I haven't shown. Uh, this work that I did earlier, complete with a nice plastic kind of coating on it now, um, I'm taking the red, as you can see here. I'm taking the red, and I bought it all the way over for my LED strip. But the red also is going to the uh, fan. By this character here. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to replace it with a yellow using 
This. See, this is how we tap into the power of the power supply. So many redundant ports all over. I'm just going to hijack into one of these. I'm going to leave this out here. This whole connector thing. Minus all that nonsense over there. And just uh, plug into a different one. Chop off the PCIe end. I think that's what it's called. And uh, use one of these. And then I've got another one spare for something else. Point being, I've got what I need. <laughs> Ladies and gents, welcome back to... Uh, this. Alright, let's do it. There we go. <laughs> there we go, it's flying off into the distance. Alright, there we go. Lovely. It's nice, it's precise, it's, uh, yep, it's definitely a fan. This is what fans are like. Just to check whether it's worked, I'm gonna plug it up to this, uh, variable voltage power supply that I got over here. Hopefully not touching each other. That's fine now. Cool. Go. Whoa, hey. And we have liftoff. Five volts. Let's slow it down, but it'll start up again. Nice and quiet, lovely in every way. Time for some one-handed fan replacement. 5 volts fan, replacing a 12 volt fan. Let's do it. Take off some bolts, put them over there. And twist. Finger strength. There we go. Try not to drop it. And out they come. Out of the all comes, really. There we go. I did forget to uh, unplug it. That probably should have happened first. Where are you at, plug? That's fine. Uh, one-handed, fingers, dexterity, this is human evolution, alright hang on, it's fine, it's fine, did it, I didn't do it one-handed but I did it, uh, you, relinquish your hold, on these seas. Here we go. Woohoo! Screw you! It's a 12 volt fan. We don't need you. We do need you. And wherever your other bolt is. Oh, there it is. Cool. New fan. New attachment. Here we go. Plugged right in. Actually right in parallel with the, uh, the old one as well. So, whatever. That's all in there. It's all fine. It's all looking good. Power supply on and uh, that's quiet, I think. That's pretty much silent. Haha, <laughs> like it should be. Hell yeah. Look at you blinking at me. The, the noise now is coming from the GPU, which will quiet down. Especially when we get a new GPU, because this one's terrible. It's old. And rubbish. Whoops. Cheers.
This is really heavy. <laughs> this will do the job. Oh. I'll tell you, my dream is to get a massive basement just to have a workshop. Well, if anything's going to do it, it should be this. Can you now wait? It's fine, isn't it? <sighs> About an hour later, according to the glue, uh, join and clamp for 20 to 30 minutes. So, that's definitely had enough time. Heavy this was. That looks really rather nice. Oh, lovely. Just lovely. Look at that. Isn't that just nice? So, uh, obviously this top, still fine. Uh, this side, bits kind of worked and bits kind of didn't with the scoring. Um, you can see on this one, it's like not really done it at all over here. And then I've kind of managed to fold it down over to this end. So I, I don't really care, that's fine. This one, pretty much perfectly fine. Oh no, 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 that's just the lighting. This is the one where there's little bits kind of broken off. It actually looks a lot better than I remembered. Unless... Oh no, no, never mind, that is the good one. <laughs> this one, pretty much as best as it could have been. Just slightly not working at the uh, ends over here. But the real kicker is this one. Now that's pretty crap. So, yeah, it's entirely broken off kind of worked, kind of got a bit of a squeal going on, and then just not at all. So, this one, I may shave all that stuff off and redo a strip. Um, I probably ought to, because it looks pretty bad, especially there. Um, but, you know, the other ones are, the other ones are manageable. Especially as this is actually the um, up edge, so you won't really see this at all from there, because your usual position will be like that. So. Yeah. Before I do any of that, though, I can do the other sides. Thank <laughs> you. 
乗り出されるみたいです。Let's go! スピードフォーね。スタートフォー。Alright. Clean up time. Well, it's not 100% dry yet, but here we have it. Uh, still needs to drill out the power button, which goes about there. But it is finished. Apart from wood staining, obviously. Oh, you can see my reflection. Hello. <laughs> it's quite ghostly, isn't it? That actually comes out rather well. Oh, I'm trapped in the PC. Help me out. Yeah, stuff like that. So, um, yes. Alright, I'm back. Time to make a power button. Uh, I'm going to design this in a program called FreeCAD, um, which is a lovely little computer-aided design, 3D modeling, well, not really 3D modeling as much as... Well, it works on a system of constraints. You sketch how you want your thing to be, and then you constrain it precisely, and you apply rules, so that when you then modify things, the, uh, the entire sketch follows those rules, and you can be sure that everything is perfectly aligned exactly how it needs to be. It's wonderful for engineering and getting things very, very precise. Not that I needed that exactly for a power button, um, it's one that's more decorative than anything, but it does mean that it produces the exact correct file format for the 3D printer. You know, I look at this and I think one thing. I really need to cut my nails. When it comes to wood staining, there's all sorts of different things. And, and this is only one shelf. There's, there's all this over here as well. I only need a small tin. And it's gonna be worn. But uh, ideally, I'll stain it and bunch it at the same time. And for that purpose, dun, 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 this should be pretty perfect. Is the hope? Just like a floor, yeah. Rather than using silver paint, would a white plastic inlay work? Perfect plastic finish, no mess, well, smooth as you like. Oh no, it sounds terrible. Hey? Oh no, it sounds terrible. Dad's idea there was to use a moldable plastic, a 60 degrees Celsius moldable plastic that when it cools down below that temperature, uh, turns into a solid white, um, you know, nice colour. Sadly, the quantity that would actually fill this letter wasn't enough for it to be white, it ended up being translucent. And so, I ended up using the silver paint and just sanded off the excess, and it turned out really quite nice. And it is silver, so it's essentially a, um, like a jewel, almost, like a jewellery piece. <laughs> Inlaid with silver. That's nice, Yeah, see, this is what I'm, this is the, pretty much exactly how she told me her favourite wood kind of style was. I'm hoping that once it's dried it will be quite nice. And yeah. I'll sand it down, do one more coat and then sand that down afterwards and, and see how it ends up.
here we have the finished product. I like the grill, I think the grill works quite nicely. I like now the new dark brown kind of thing, and here comes Mother into the video. Mother! <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, that's quite nice. So here's the case in different lighting. Um, and also the sound of traffic outside. Don't we love traffic? God damn it, shut up! Be quiet! Anyway, what was I saying? Here is a mid-tower ATX case, which is kind of your standard computer size. Um, the one I use for my video editing and gaming and stuff is actually even bigger than this. Probably comes up to around here. So you can see size-wise, certainly a lot shorter. Definitely wider. This is about 30 centimeters. this is about 20 centimeters. So sorry, one half longer. It's one and a half times as wide. Um, but shorter, stouter, and uh, not quite as long either. This was the prototype. The one I mentioned right back at the start of the video. So I think you can say that I've learned quite a lot. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with it. It turned out well. I learned a lot. And I'm hoping that you will be happy with it as well. Okay. I know we were all thinking it. It's the big elephant in the room. The one that I haven't really addressed. I've just said is good enough. This looks pretty crap. Don't deny it, we're all thinking it. This is pretty unneat and pretty horrible. If only I had a way of making something, just, you know, some sort of slot that could go in there, but I just, I just don't have anything that could even put... Well, yeah, I have a 3D printer, I completely forgot about that. That's a bit neater, isn't it? <laughs> this is a bit too thick, actually, for my liking. Um, so I'm probably going to print another one, which is one millimeter deep bezel rather than two millimeters deep there we go that's a little bit more flush compared to that much nicer I found the most attentive cat ever. Say hello to Megzi, was it? Hello. Well, if I just stand up and ignore you, <laughs> look what she does. Gotta go now, more friends are here. <laughs> 